Welcome my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man, and today's video, as you can tell from the thumbnail and the description, it's about printers, on how to set up a printer properly. And the idea comes from my article that is about top 10 hard desktop support interview questions and answers that is located on CosmicNovo.com. There will be a link at the end of this video if you'd like to read this for yourself. This is a third video based off of this article. First one being uh, remote desktop and DNS related. Second one being about missing files and desktop icons. Again, at the end of this video, there will be icons that you can select to watch either one of those. And if you're interested, I highly suggest that you do. Very interesting stuff. I go about uh, explaining these type of videos in a specific way where it's easy to follow for anybody. So today's printer, uh, today's printer, <laughs> today's question is related to installing a new printer at the office place that you work at. Now, before I go through it, let me just kind of explain my method of explaining this um, in a answer format. Um, I usually have four steps, and that is first, second, third, and last point or uh, explanation that I have for each uh, question that is presented to me, especially if this is a you know interview question, because I want the potential employer to understand that I am you know very knowledgeable when it comes to IT and you guys can do the same all right so let's get to it the question is your office received a new printer and now it needs to be configured for everyday use by a specific department in your building so keep that in mind it's for a specific department only how would you go about installing this printer in a direct IP printing setup the direct IP printing setup also being something to remember. And the way I would start to explain this, I would say, first, I would unpack the printer to make sure all parts and cables are there. Uh, then I would connect <laughs> and plug in the printer into the power and network port available at designated location. Also, designated location here is very important to keep in mind. So obviously, um, for when it comes to this, you know, you get that giant box and, you know, these are large printers for businesses. You know, you unpack it and then you make sure everything's there, right? You make sure it has all parts and cables and then you put it together, plug it in and, you know, plug it into printer into power network port at the designated location. Second, I would make sure that this new printer has a static IP address assigned to it. And that kind of goes back to our designated location. For this designated location where we have placed our new printer, we have to kind of take note of the port that is there for the network uh, cable that is connected to, right? We, we, we would know, okay, well, this is the port number for this, you know, for this location. And then we would talk to our network guy or we would do it ourselves and make sure that we have a static IP address available and assigned to it. So let me show you what I mean. If you go to your network adapter properties and look at the those those settings there, you go to properties, right? And you would make sure that you have a static IP address available to you. So if you have a static IP address that you want to use for that port, uh, this can be assigned um, through the switch itself and that port would simply just use that and it would never change. And that's the whole point. It's static. We don't want it to change because we want users to connect to it every time. So when you go here into the, the Ethernet adapter properties and select Internet Protocol version 4, if your company is using uh, IP version 4, you will go in here and if you have to, you would specify the static IP address. So I'm just kind of showing it to you on the computer itself, but this is what you would do inside the printer. You would say, use this you know, IP address if this is something you have to do. This is just me explaining to you what a static IP address is and why you would need it for a printer so that users can always connect to it 
and know where it's at so that way they can install it on their computer afterwards and i'll show you that as well and also i would acquire driver pa package for the specific model printer unless the printer is set up to push the drivers automatically upon a request so if printer for some reason doesn't come with driver package or software obviously you would go to the manufacturer website download all the drivers that you need so let's say it's an hp computer it's a hp printer you would go to hp and specify model get this information and then the reason for that is if needed we would um, basically go to active directory and tell active directory to push this driver but just kind of hold on to that thought uh, because most new printers automatically push the drivers so if it's a brand new computer a brand new uh, printer it would automatically push the driver to the user that is trying to install it and i will go back to the active directory part that i've uh, that i've uh, that i spoke about third active directory needs to know of the printer added so this is where that comes in it needs to be, it would know it needs to know that it's added and it added to the domain itself right active directory you know domain so what happens is you would take a host name you would create a host name for this printer you would assign a host name and then you would add it to the active directory so that active directory knows that there is a printer connected to this domain so that way it can control who can use this printer through gpo or a group policy and what this does is it only allows certain users of that department to use the printer so basically once you have a group of people a group of users for a specific department you can literally just add all of those people into the permissions to use that printer that's been added to actor directory so actor directory is a simple simple way to control who can who can use the printer and who cannot and that kind of goes back to our part uh, where it's kind of related to the driver package if you have to specifically get the driver package you can set up actor directory to push the driver as somebody tries to install it so uh, but again new printers will just do this automatically on their own whenever somebody tries to add it and that is done by the uh, static ip address or the host name and this is why i talked about it here if driver has to be pushed separately this can be configured as well and in active directory lastly i would notify the users of the new printer and its ip address and assist accordingly so of course you would have to help them because that's your job remember how we talked about a static ip address here well your printer with the static ip address that you assigned it to would be used by users or you would do it for them let me just pull up my printers menu and here we would add our printer so the way would we would do it we you know with printers um, menu we would simply just select add printer so now it's searching for the printers but usually you saw how that little that popped up this link it usually doesn't find it right away so you have to specifically tell it so with the users when it comes to users you would simply give them the ip address and say hey this is the ip address for this printer just add it in there and it's going to automatically install it for you but a lot of times you would do it for them so you just click this printer that i want isn't listed because it's not going to find it most of the time and that's okay and now we have this menu that you may be familiar with uh, and remember how we talked about that ip address well here it is we can add the printer using tcp ip address or host name so we can either use the ip address or the host name usually what i do i just you know go by the ip address because uh, it's i don't know it's just the way i prefer it but it really doesn't matter so you have select that and then we would select next and it brings us to this menu here we would for example just type in the you know ip address that we've assigned it and we would in my case i'm just going to you know come up with an ip address let's say it's 192.168.100.1 so let's just assume that that's where our printer is located 
and that's its IP address. And something to keep in mind when it comes to installing the drivers, if it's a newer printer, you'll be able to simply select the check mark here if not selected. By default, it is, I believe. And what that does is queries the printer. It pings the printer and says, hey, do you have a driver? And the printer says, yes, I do. And it then automatically installs it on your computer. So that's pretty awesome. Um, if you don't, you can later on specify the driver that you want to use. But this should be set up so it automatically does it. And then simply you will select next. And it's going to look for it. And then it's going to install it. Of course, I, I forget to mention the printer may have a port assigned to it as well. And uh, you would simply type that in after the IP address that I showed you. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh, lastly, I would notify the users, the new printers, and the IP address. I said that already. And that was the last part of this. If you have any questions in regards to this, I know this is a little bit complicated. And that's the whole point. The title of this article is Top 10 Hard desktop support interview questions and answers because you know you have to explain your steps on how to do this and I wanted to make these type of videos so you guys can kind of learn from this and to at least make it as easy to understand as possible whether you have experience or not it's good to have this type of knowledge or refresher for you know uh, my friends that are already IT professionals like me. All right, guys, please like this video, share it with your buddies. I'm sure they will like it. And don't forget, I have those two other videos you can watch. There is a link in the description. And hey, if you want to check out my computer setup that I have, there's also a link in the description below. So if you want to check that out, that's cool too. All right, guys. I wish you best of luck and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.